Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will talk about the in my opinion number one clean coat mistake which in and of itself is often seen as a best practice and usually also is a best practice but very often people get it wrong. And that mistake is trying to eliminate duplicate code in your projects at all costs. And right away before you get this wrong eliminating duplicate code in and of itself is a good thing. However my point here is that eliminating duplicate code can sometimes lead to problems in other parts of your code base if that wrong. In this video I want to give you an example from the Android world where I see people do exactly that mistake I, I talk about and then explain the exact reasons and the problems that we can get from these mistakes. And first of all to understand this mistake we need to dive into Android Studio here and check out this little sample project I created. Super simple but we still need to go through this so you know what I'm talking about. Let's assume we have a simple music player app for example which also talks to some kind of remote server and streams music that way. So very often we just have a screen which takes in a state which just combines that screen's um, state. So if we're connected to the music servers, we have a list of song names and this could of course be much more complex in the real world. And then we have this on event lambda for each screen where we send these music events. So basically just an event for every single thing the user could do on the screen. So if we take a look into that, when we click a button, for example, we would like to connect to our remote servers. If we have our song list and we select a song or click on that, we could uh, trigger this select song name event and of course there could be much more in practice. So that itself is a very common architecture people choose and that's also the architecture I personally prefer for Jetpack Compose projects. However, what I then often see people do is they see that the view models for these screens always have some repeating patterns because every single view model in this type of architecture has one screen state, it has this on event function and it might also have some kind of event channel for example where the view model sends events to the UI for example to um, show snack bar to navigate things like that. So these events that the view model sends to the UI could be considered UI events. For example if there is some kind of error in the view model if we get a network response and it's just unsuccessful then we might want to send this error UI event with a message to the UI and the UI directly um, shows a snack bar with that error message for example. And we might also have an event like navigate if the view model wants the UI to navigate to the next screen the view model could send this navigate event with a corresponding uh, route to the UI and the UI will then use the nav controller to do that. So far so good and what most beginners now think is that well every single view model of your app will need these fields. So on the one hand every view model will need a screen state it will need an on event lambda which uh, the, uh, the UI can use to send events to the view model and it will need a channel that sends these UI events to the UI. So why don't we just create this base view model? This base view model does nothing else than abstracting out what I just mentioned. So here we say every single view model needs to have such a state. We initialize it with a default state function which is abstract so the child view models will need to implement this function to provide the default state so just the initial screen state. We then expose the public immutable version of this state. Here we have our on event lambda which I talked about which the uh, UI will then call with a generic screen event so that can differ for every single view model as well as the state of course. And then we have this UI event channel, which is just a channel in which we can send these UI events such as, hey, show error message, please navigate to this screen. And we will have a function which every child view model can easily call, uh, which simply sends an event into this channel. And the reason people do this is because they, they want to eliminate duplicate code. This is, for example, something we don't need to put in every single view model. This is something we don't need to put in every single view model. Uh, we don't need this send event function and launch a coroutine for every single um, event that gets sent. Um, so with this abstraction, we really achieve that we can share this common code with all of our view models in our project. And here in this music view model, this is a sample how this could be used. So this inherits from base view model, takes in the music state and the music event. The default state is simply the default music state. Here in on event, which we need to override, we just handle these events normally as we would. And then, as you can see, we can just normally manipulate the state since we inherit from our base view model. And if there is, for example, an exception, we just send an event, an array event with this message to the UI so the UI can then show a snack bar, for example. Before I can talk about the issues with this approach, we also need to take a look at what I did at the UI level. So here in my main activity, where we have our nav host or navigation setup and we have our music screen, we just initialize our view model, we get the state, and then we have a base screen wrapper. What this base screen wrapper does is it pretty much just, yeah, 
puts a scaffold around all of our content and then it has this launched effect block which simply collects these UI events from our base view model. So this just expects any type of view model of our product, then it collects these UI events and it says, okay, if we get an error, we want to show a snack bar. If we get this navigate event, we simply want to navigate. And by doing this and simply wrapping all of our screens, inside of this base screen wrapper, we don't need to put this launched effect block with this collection logic in all of our single screens, which would be our music screen here, for example. So that again gets rid of quite some duplicate code. And especially with all these base classes, that is something that is usually quite opinionated. So now my opinion comes and why I think you should avoid that in pretty much most cases. And there are multiple reasons which I now will go over. And reason number one is, and that is the biggest one, and that is that it increases complexity and coupling. So very often, if you try to eliminate some kind of duplicate code in your project, this results in a strong increase of uh, coupling in your project. What does coupling mean? Coupling in the end just refers to two pieces of your code knowing each other. So for example, if you have a view model and the view model uses a repository, then these two classes are coupled to each other. And while that's not bad itself, and of course um, our classes will need to talk to each other somehow, a strong coupling leads to a lot of problems. Because if two classes are coupled to each other, that always means that one change in one class can also result in a change in another class. Let's take the example of the view model and repository again. If you use a repository's function in the view model and you then go to the repository and remove that function that will result in a change in the view model because it still calls a function of the repository which doesn't exist anymore so the more coupling you have in your project so the more classes interact with other classes in your project the more you will have to change things if you just change a certain function or a field in a class because lots of other classes might depend on that. And with base classes, it's nothing else than a super strong coupling. Since all that really happens here with this base view model is that we force our whole project view models to implement this base view models functions. So here in this case, the coupling is between our base view model and all of our other view models in this project. And while this might not be a problem for a simple to do or note app, imagine you're working on quite a big app that has hundreds of view models. And the team then notices that they need to change something in the base view model. If you have such a project with 100 view models, for example, and you have one change in the base view model itself, that means you will have to change 100 view models together with that single change. And that also means that you can't do this refactoring or migration step by step to migrate each single view model step by step. No, if the base view model is affected, you will have to do it all in one go because otherwise your project won't even compile. Like just imagine Jetpack Compose would have such a mechanism and you have an XML code base which you want to migrate to Jetpack Compose and Jetpack Compose would force you to, to do the whole migration in one single go. Then nobody would really do that if you have a code base with like hundreds of thousands of lines of code. So luckily Jetpack Compose does not force us to do that and let us migrate our project step by step by just adding some Compose views to single fragments, for example. And also such a strong coupling hinders experimentation. So let's say you're planning to implement some kind of change in your app and you just want to try that change out in a, in a small part of your code base and ideally in isolation. So you don't want to affect other, other places in your code base with that change with such base classes or strong coupling, that is usually pretty hard. So coupling is one thing why you need to be careful with always trying to eliminate duplicate code. Another thing is complexity, which I mentioned. And I think most of you will probably agree here that having such base classes or comparable solutions with lots of generic parameters is not trivial to understand. So I now work in Android for, for quite some time, but still every single time I open a class and it looks like this, like abstract, uh, generic one, generic two, generic three, uh, view model, protected, abstract, then I'm like, whoa, what, what happens here? So that's also one thing that decides about how maintainable and scalable a project is, just how easy is it to understand certain parts of a code base for someone who is new on the team. And such solutions often make that quite hard. Okay, so far we talked about coupling, complexity, but there is more I can talk about why I would not recommend to eliminate duplicate code at all cost. And the next point I want to talk about is flexibility you will lose. If we take a look in our base screen wrapper, we see that it always collects the UI events of every single view model. So far, so good. And then it will simply show a snack bar for every single error event. But what that will mean is 
that you will force your whole project to show errors as a snack bar. But what if you want to show a dialog instead? What if you want to show a toast instead? What if you just want to have a persistent error message? And while I of course intentionally chose this uh, super bad example with just having one generic error event, because I just see people often do this mistake, you could of course argue that you could extend this UI event with a show snack bar event, with a show dialog event, with a show toast event, um, to handle all these scenarios specifically and then let the view model decide what to show. But as soon as you then also add something like persistent error messages that um, need some form of state, then the error handling becomes quite inconsistent in my opinion, because sometimes you need to make the errors a state, sometimes you send events, sometimes you send different events, then at some point you will notice, okay, this navigate event actually also needs some options because I want to pop something from the back stack, then you need to adjust that. And this solution will grow a lot more and more and every single change will still affect all your code base. Another example is if we take a look in the base view model, take a look at this send event function, which just launches an independent coroutine for every single event we send. What actually happens if a child view model wants to wait until a certain event has been processed by the UI? Since this is in the end a suspending function, that suspends as long as the corresponding flow collector in the UI takes to process that event. And if you do something afterwards, like having a print line statement here, then this would be executed after this event has been processed by the UI. If you need to wait for this, this is not possible in the child view models. Since you always force events to be sent in an independent coroutine and there's no way to place some code after this line, except if you add some callback lambdas, for example, or remove the view model scope, but then you again don't have the real advantage of uh, saving or eliminating duplicate code here. And last but not least, where you use a lot of flexibility is uh, here where, we, where you expose this state there is no way for you to have some kind of reactivity with this state by applying some flow operators here. For example, before you convert this to an immutable state flow. Um, of course, you could again do this in each child view model, but then you again need to manipulate the flows which you manipulated before in the base view model. And this is kind of an ugly solution. So there are just quite some things which are usually independent and different for each view model in your project. But having such a base solution often forces your child view models to use a little bit of a word approach to handle these scenarios. And last but not least, an argument I want to bring is premature optimization. I'm sure some of you might have already heard the quote that premature optimization is the root of all evil. And all that quote really means is that you shouldn't focus on code and performance optimizations until that actually becomes a problem. So what I mean in this specific scenario is that if you're just starting out on a project, the first thing you do is you flood it with base classes to eliminate duplicate code, which doesn't even exist first of all, then you're also trying to solve a problem which doesn't exist yet. So instead I recommend to just get started working on a project without having such fancy looking solutions and then as soon as you notice a certain approach is not feasible or not well usable for your specific scenario then you can start to refactor and adjust it to your needs. And if you then decide okay uh, it's actually inheritance how you solve your problem then if it's up to me it's fine but first of all get to the point where you have a specific problem and where such a base class really really solve something instead of just preventing you from uh, typing a few lines of extra code in each view model, which by the way, isn't even really error prone code. So again, I hope you don't get this wrong and now think that eliminating duplicate code is a bad thing. That is really not what I'm saying. Very often you can absolutely do that without disadvantages. And I also would do that as soon as I can. For example, if you just notice, okay, I have this piece of code in a class that I just need twice at different places, then you can of course take this piece of code, extract it into a function and call that function at both your places where you need this code. That is an example where it's absolutely fine and reasonable to eliminate duplicate code. And then it should be a priority. But my point here is that always take into account other important factors of code quality that simply make a software scalable and maintainable. And these are simply things like simplicity, testability, low coupling. And then for each individual factor, you need to decide how important that is for your individual scenario. So all I'm saying is trying to stick to a certain best practice at all costs can prevent you to stick to other best practices in your code base. So what do you think about this topic? Of course, this is always an opinion and I would love to hear your opinion. Have you worked in code bases where such a base class, for example, backfired? Then let us know that down below. And apart from that, I wish you an amazing rest of your week and see you back in the next video. Bye bye.